everybody, it's Ebeth here. Now, I realize laughter is not necessarily the easiest thing for everyone to do, especially when life's current events are just not funny. Devil, get behind me. So I put together a list of a few ideas that might help you get a few more belly laughs in your day-to-day -day life. Here it is. Watch something funny. Call a funny friend. If you don't have a funny friend, you need to make some new friends. Oh. Fake laugh in the mirror and do some tongue twisters. <laughs> Buy a silly internet challenge like eating eight Ritz crackers at the same time. <laughs> and think about the fact that no matter how dark your past has been, the devil, like, he can't even win. That's comedy. And mama, because our work is never over, don't forget to just dance it out. It's never over. You know, it really just boils down to making a decision to laugh every single day and highlighting the funny parts of your life. It may have felt like your life was being streamed as a drama on the Lifetime channel, but I'm telling you that you have the power to flip the script and turn it into a romantic comedy. Say comedy. You ready? Comedy. One, two, three. Comedy. Right now is a perfect time to be a blessing to someone else. There are many ways you can do this without even leaving your home. You can leave a thank you note for your mail or delivery person, pledge to donate blood with the American Red Cross, pay for meals for your local first responders, call someone you haven't spoken to in a while and say hi, or pay for the groceries or gas of the person behind or next to you. During this time, let's do what we can to put smiles on our faces, show our appreciation, and help someone in need. Staying home doesn't mean we need to look frumpy every day. So here are a few hints to help you maintain your nails. Number one, keep them clean. As you wash your hands, be sure to scrub underneath your nails because germs love to hide there. Number two, if you have any type of nail enhancements, whether it's gel or acrylic, and you don't know how to maintain your feel or you aren't willing to learn, you need to be like Elsa and let them go. Take them off because you don't want moisture to get trapped between your natural nail bed and that enhancement because fungus will grow. Number three, a manicure always does the trick. Just uh, soak your nails, shape them, buff them, add polish if you like to, and you'll be all set. The key is to keep it simple and stay beautiful. All right, ladies, let's talk food. Here are some tips on how to make your meals stretch and where to find some good recipes. Freeze your food. Everything from meat and milk to fruit and eggs can be stored in the freezer and used at a later date. Check your expiration dates. Make plans to cook, eat your food before they expire. Take inventory of what you have. Purposefully create meals around what you have in stock. Portion control. Use smaller serving utensils, plates, and bowls. Lastly, use apps and websites to find recipes such as Fridge to Table, Tasty, YouTube, and Pinterest. Parties canceled, events postponed, get-togethers a distant memory. So what do you do with all your extra time? Let's take a look at what some of the girls are doing. I have been using my time to become a better steward and organizer over my home life, my friendships, my goals, and my body. Relaxing and focusing on the purpose that God has for my life taking up a second language. The reading, it's allowed me to really be present and also incorporating long walks. Learning and perfecting new recipes, um, playing around with natural hairstyles. I've been um, in my yard, my front yard, in my flower beds and uh, in the backyard in the flower beds and clean them out, getting them ready for my flowers. So that's what I've been doing in my extra time. Hey ladies, I'd like to talk to you briefly about the gifts and talents that are on the inside of you and maybe rediscovering and reconnecting with those gifts. Many of us have talents we aren't even aware of. And in order to find them, you have to try new things. Sign up for a free online class. Start a new hobby or get serious about something you've always wanted to do. Try writing a poem. Learn a new language. Hola. Or plant a garden in your yard. 
You won't know you're gifted at something until you do it. For some of us, we already know of something we already have a knack for. Now is the time to pick it back up. For me, it was rediscovering and reconnecting with my art side. Yes, I don't just sing, ladies. Mm -hmm. I love to draw. It's been a lot of fun during this time reconnecting with my art, and I'd love to show you some of my artwork at the end of this video. Mm -hmm. So what are you waiting for? Come on, let's get started. Start writing, start singing, start painting, or whatever it is that you're good at. Just pick it back up and do it again. So let's use all the many gifts that God has blessed us with. Bye, ladies. Talking about staying connected with family and friends. Um, of course, the telephone, you know, calling and texting. Um, but especially during this time, as we really are missing out on engaging with one another and socializing and seeing each other, it's a good time to use FaceTime or Zoom or Google Hangout or Google Talk. Um, and if you don't know how to use some of these platforms, there are always videos on YouTube to teach you how to use some of these platforms um, that are actually pretty easy to use. I did not know how to use Zoom before this uh, epidemic uh, began, but now I've been able to use that to make family video calls and to have a date night with some other married couple friends that we did, you know, like last Saturday. So just things like that to try to stay social and try to stay connected to one another. Because as the Bible tells us, we are members of one body and every member of the body Every joint is supposed to supply. We need one another. We need relationship with one another. So I just wanted to encourage you during this time with a couple of those tips. Oh, hi there. Welcome to my awesome, sanitized, amazing home. I'm here to give you a great tip so you can have perfect kids in a perfect house just like every Christian woman that ever existed. Sometimes there will be hard days and that's just part of being a mom, being a woman. And Jesus made it plain that you will have days that are really a struggle. First, I have to know myself. When I feel like I'm about to hit a wall, I have to say to myself, do I need to step away? If I need to step away to take a breather, then I need to say something. That means I may have to put my kids in front of a show or play an audiobook or something that they will pay attention to for 15 to 20 minutes. Sometimes moms feel a lot of guilt for giving their kids screen time, but if that means you are gonna be a happier mom that day, a happier woman that day, then you may need to do it. In this quarantine times, it can be difficult, but I know you can make it through. So no matter what you're going through, know that there will be a season where you will be free of the chaos. In Jesus' name. Happy Mother's Day! Happy Mother's Day, everybody! Hey ladies, here are some tips on how not to overeat. Start your meal with a glass of water. Don't eat straight from the container. Eat slowly. Don't eat while you're on the go, distracted or watching TV. Take smaller bites. If none of that works, put a note in your refrigerator that says, close the door, you just ate. Here's three fitness tips that'll keep your beauties moving even while at home. Tip one, plan to exercise. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. From envisioning yourself doing the workout the night before to literally adding it into your schedule. Don't have a huge block of time to devote to exercise? Spread the workout out in increments throughout the day during your kids' playtime or short breaks between work. Tip two, get creative. Ladies, we don't need a lot of equipment to get moving. Stairs, a wall, your body is all you need. But you can use your kids' toys or old textbooks if you wanna add resistance. Anything you can push, pull, lift, or carry safely is fair game. Perform three to five sets of three to five exercises and you got yourself a DIY workout. And tip three, don't wait until you feel like it, cause you won't. Instead, implement motivators that'll keep you moving in the right direction. If music is your motivator, bump that playlist in the house while you exercise. And if feeling good is your jam, cause that's your business. Slip into those cute leggings and get it done. Happy Mother's Day. 
All right, ladies, let's talk about being healthy and feeling good. Here are some tips on how to maintain good physical health. Get a good night's sleep. Stay hydrated. Drink plenty of water. Maintain good hygiene, even if you aren't going anywhere. Take time to relax. And lastly, eat nutritionally balanced meals. We know that having kids at the home, especially during this time, can be really frustrating, but there are practical ways that you can deal with it. Michelle, tell us about it. To avoid getting frustrated with my children uh, in or, uh, during bedtime is to get them to go to bed on time. I tell them I will take their electronics. So that has helped me uh, get them to bed and on a schedule during the evening. If you, if you want, to have your electronics and your phone and your game, you gotta go to sleep. So if you don't go to sleep, you won't get anything. What has helped me during this time is to create a schedule so that my children have something to look forward to, to also allow them a little bit more time um, watching educational shows on YouTube and take the time to have FaceTime with grandma who can take them away from us for a few minutes or so and also keep them contained by giving them a bath. I would say getting uh, them out uh, every day in the sunshine um, to expend some of that energy. Um, I like to get Jackson out a couple times a day so that when it's time for nap time and time for bedtime, he's off and he's ready to be out, so. Good deal, that is all good stuff, girls. And for me personally, how not to get frustrated for my kids is I remember that they're locked up in this house just like me. And I need to give them just a little bit of a break. So let's all encourage them, love them, and let's know that God can even help us through frustrations at home. Many of us have been thrust into the role of being a homeschool mom literally overnight. Here are a few things you can do to homeschool without the stress. Number one, ask God to help you. You need a plan, and God knows exactly what will work best for your family and for every circumstance that's going around. Number two, have a set schedule and a set area for schooling to take place. Children find safety and structure and routines, and it helps if everyone is on the same page and knows what to expect ahead of time. Number three, pack your patience. This is different for everyone. It's new to you and it's new to your children. So be patient with them as they adjust to this new norm as well. Number three, know that you've got what it takes. As a mom, you have the anointing of God to see you through this time. Hey moms, listen up. We have some fun ideas on how to entertain your kids during this time. Play a family board game. Go for a bike ride or a walk. Have a picnic in the backyard. Build a fort. Have a dance off. Stage a play. Have a talent show. But that's not all. You can search for other great ideas on websites like youtube.com or pinterest.com. Have you been checking out the internet and comparing your family with their family? Wondering how do they make things seem so easy? You know, everybody in the house helping out, pitching in, making perfect meals, kids are being perfect. Even homeschool seems like a breeze. And then you start thinking about your family and start making comparisons. And then you're at your wit's end. You wanna put everybody out the house, including the cat and the dog. Well, I got a solution for that, and that solution is thankfulness. Thankfulness helps you appreciate those things that you have, as well as give you peace of mind. So right now, I want you to think of one thing that you're thankful for, and put it in the comment section, and let's get ready to have an attitude of gratitude. Happy Mother's Day. I'm thankful for visual technology, especially during this time. I am thankful for in this season is our church, Word of Faith, and our amazing Bishop, Bishop Keith A. Butler. I'm thankful for being able to spend time with my husband and my children and experiencing some homeschool opportunities. I'm thankful for my family and especially my baby girl who will be here sometime in the next couple of weeks. 
I'm thankful during this time for my spiritual friends. I am thankful for God's joy and his peace, for his love and his comfort. I am so thankful that God allowed me to become a mom by blessing me with my beautiful baby boy, Lucas. I am thankful for good health and the ability and the strength to finish college during this time. Stillness. It's allowed me to understand that it's time to let go of some things and it's time to also welcome some things into my life that will help, help me fulfill my purpose. I am so thankful to have this time to get organized. This is what I want you ladies to know. You don't want the cops. The cops, C-O-P-S, coming after you for the way you're treating your hair during this shut-in time. So I came up with this acronym to help you remember what a few things to do. First, you want to always clean. C is for clean. Clean and condition your scalp and your hair really well. And use a good product that works for you. You have to find that out, what works for you. And um, you want to clean your scalp. I like to scratch it up first before I shampoo my hair and shampoo my client's hair and get all the dirt and grime up first. If you can, don't hurt yourself, but get it up. Then shampoo um, your scalp and hair really clean. And next, out of the cups, the C is for clean and condition. And remember to get the right product for your hair type. The next thing I want you ladies to know is you have to have the proper oils. Oh. It's for oils. You want to have the proper oils. This is an olive oil base and I make it um, myself and I like to put um, peppermint and tea tree in it because once you scratch your scalp up, it's really good and refreshing to go in to um, cleanse the scalp for you um, and to refresh in it after it's cleansed. So that's the O, oil. Get the right oils. Coconut oil is one of my favorites too. You need coconut oil for every, it, it, it shines like nothing you've ever seen before. So I would take some and use it with my hair in its natural state a little bit every day on the tips. And then I would put it on my fingertips and massage it in my scalp. Um, I would do that in the day and at night. And that keeps the moisture in your hair. So next thing we wanna do in the uh, uh, line is P. You want to remember to protect your hair. So what you do, you I do is I take and I'll um, part it in the center like so and I'll take a, a protecting band and wrap around it and I'll take that and just like fluff it away just so that your hair is not loose and out, out all night and on the pillows and everything. So you want a clean condition, you want to oil, and you want to protect your hair. So tie it up at night, braid it down, contain it some kind of way, because that is really helpful for getting through this shut-in time and just for period. And the last thing in our COPS edition that we want to remember is sleep. You want to protect your hair while you're sleeping. So you get a silk pillowcase or in a silk scarf, tie your hair down, keep it protected and the cops will not come knocking. Hello family and welcome to Rosie's Righteous Royal Right Standing Recommended Routine and Regular Cleaning Tips. I'm so excited to come to you today. We've got a wonderful lesson today. Today will be how to properly clean a mirror. I want to remind you, make sure you get those doorknobs on all your doors. Make sure you get the handles, faucet handles and the other handles in your house. Make sure you get those countertops and hard surfaces and even the floors. It's important to keep that all clean because while we clean it, we might as well bam, bam clean it all, bam, 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 get it all clean, okay? So we're gonna get started with our cleaning tips for the mirror. First, you wanna always have your protective gear. And so gloves, uh, safety glasses, depending on if you'll be splashing, my glasses serve as my safety glasses. And I'm used to cleaning, so I won't be splashing. But if you're a splasher, you may wanna also make sure that you have uh, some kind of nose guard or mouth guard as well to keep things from splashing. So what you wanna do is you wanna have your spray and you wanna have a cloth. Now, in the old day, they told us to make sure we use newspaper uh, so because it does do well on streaks, but at least lips sometimes. And so does paper towel. So if you use one of these cloths with no streaking and then you can use your spray so you want to spray and wipe and just give a little spray and wipe here we go spray and wipe so and you want to wipe in a rotating motion so you want to go circular or either zigzag so circular zigzag so spray and wipe spray and wipe spray 
and wipe. And there you have it. All right, girls, here are three quick ways you can declutter your home. First, start with things that are old or expired, like food, nail polish, you know, the one you couldn't open with a sledgehammer, and then go on to other things such as coupons. I know if you look, it says May 15th, but look a little bit closer. It says 2017. Go ahead and throw that out. Then move on to things you have too much of, like restaurant sauce packets. No one needs an emergency stash of 3,000 ketchup packets. All right, moving on. Lastly, throw out things you can't, won't, or just shouldn't use, like games with missing pieces, socks without a match, and all that stuff that has holes in it, like towels, rags, and even your favorite pair of underwear. It's time to let it go, girls. Throw away all these things and you'll be well on your way to a clutter-free home. Ladies, what have you been doing since you and your husband has been spending so much time together lately? This is the perfect opportunity to rekindle some of those flames, which might be down to a flicker by now. Spice up your marriage. It's so important to take time to talk, communicate, make your relationship a priority. Say yes more often to your husband. Bring back some of those things that you used to do. You know what they are? Come up with new ideas, be creative. Set up romantic moods by putting on makeup, perfume, music, candlelight meals, and wear outfits you know he'll like. The word says in Hebrews 3, the marriage bed is undefiled. I say if the two of you agree in the bedroom, run it. Oh, if the kids are home, don't forget to lock the door. Hello ladies, this is Lady Mac wishing you all a happy Mother's Day and I want to leave you with a few tips on how not to be afraid. Tip number one, don't consume the news all day. Get the facts and be on your way. Tip number two, rehearse the scriptures that build faith in you because fear will rob you of God's best for you. And tip number three, Although we are living in troubling times, remember, Jesus is always on the main line. Today, I would like to talk to you about how to resolve conflict in the home. While we're living in homes with people that we love and people that we like, we will still have disagreement. But those disagreements do not have to escalate into something that threatens our happy home. We need to understand how to properly diffuse or resolve conflict. And I would like to just share one tip with you today. Psalms 15.1 says, a soft answer turns away wrath. Yes, we're going to have disagreements with our loved ones but they do not have to end badly. We should always remember that when voices start to elevate, also temper starts to rise. And at that point, we are no longer in a reasonable state of mind. We are over into our emotions. And when emotions get in the mix, nothing good happens. So to resolve conflict successfully, Maintain a soft tone, a soft answer when you're talking to your loved one. And I assure you that conversation will end well. There is nothing quite like the power of forgiveness. Nothing is so freeing as letting go of bitterness. There is nothing quite like forgiving and forgetting undoing the damage done without doubt or regretting. There is nothing quite like a heart willing to believe. The words, I am sorry, so peace it can receive. There is nothing quite like mending hurt feelings, resolving lifelong issues to bring inner healing. There is nothing quite like the attitude of humility, letting go and letting God turn discord into tranquility. There is nothing quite like the power of God's grace, the pure joy of release when forgiveness we embrace.
how to stay informed and not over informed. Now this is a very, very important topic because obviously we're living in an unprecedented time and it's important to stay informed and we do that by whatever means that you do that, whether that's social media or whether that's the news or what have you. So it's important for you, yes, while it's important for you to get information, it's also important for you to not overdo it. You know, the Bible says to guard your heart where out of it flows the issues of life. One of the interesting things I find about this is that it says for you to guard your heart because what you allow to happen in your life is heavily affected by what actually comes into your heart. That word issues also can be translated by boundaries and this is what I learned very early on is that I learned I had to set some boundaries so that I could walk into the peace and stay in peace that God had sent Jesus to die for one of the ways I've done this is is that I made a decision that forever however much um, that I allowed myself to take in this information that I felt like I needed and sometimes I just sat there a little bit longer or if I'm just reading social media I want to say one of the important things to do is if forever how much time you allow yourself to stay there, you got to do more with the word there. And there are multiple ways to do that. I know whenever I started feeling overwhelmed, I would actually get up and physically start walking around my house speaking the word. Speaking the word. Even if you don't know a lot of scripture, any scripture will do. You know, one of the things I... One of the things I always start with is the, the word talks about, it says that God is a God who cannot lie. And I dwell in the secret place of the most high and I abide under the shadow of the almighty. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I'm covered by the blood. This house is covered by the blood of Jesus. The name of Jesus is higher than every name and coronavirus COVID-19 has to bow in the name of Jesus. Jesus died on the cross for me to be healed from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. So therefore every virus, every symptom, every sickness, every disease that tries to touch my body dies instantly great is the peace of my child because he is taught of the lord he is healthy he is wealthy he is wise he is protected my family is protected and i would just go on and on and on and then sometimes i would even do this and i had tears in my eyes you know i'm sure all of us have had these overwhelming moments like what is happening but one of the other ways, and this is this is probably one of my favorite ways to really just get up and just speak that word and keep that on the inside of you, is to find yourself a, a song that is full of the word. For me, it was Waymaker. Um, because, you know, music is so important because it's just words that are put to uh, music. And with music, because we listen to it repetitively, you're saying it over and over again. You know, the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing. And what we get from that is the principle that what gets into your heart and has an effect on your life is what you hear. And so, you know, I, like Waymaker, I, and, and especially on some days. And some days, you know, I found a, a YouTube version of it that I really loved. And, and even some nights at 2, 3 in the morning, if I couldn't sleep, I would come downstairs. I would put that YouTube on and let it play. And I would cry on my face. I would worship those words, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. And as I continue to do that, and I spend more time with that and speaking the word and building myself up and building up my spirit. I had less time for the drama. So while I made a decision to stay informed for what I needed to do, the more I've done this, the more my spirit has been stronger. So I can even tell sometimes I'm like, you know, praise God, I, I'm going to excuse myself from this conversation, from this situation. I got what I needed. And you know what I need? Jesus. And I have him, his blood and I'm protected and I'm covered. I'm healthy and I'm wealthy and I'm wise. I'm his, I'm his ambassador. No COVID-19 is in his house, but therefore it's not in my house in the name of Jesus. Today I'd like to talk to you about how to keep your self-esteem high. The Bible talks about us being a tripart being. We are a spirit, we have a soul, which is our mind, our intellect and emotions, and we live in this physical body. So one of the things that we can do from a natural standpoint is just keeping up with our daily routine. You know, like getting up, making your bed, taking a shower, putting your makeup on. And I know for everybody, our routine is different, but this will help us to stay in the right frame of mind. Then from a spiritual standpoint, we know and understand as believers that our identity is rooted and grounded in Jesus Christ. 
And the way that we continue to find out who we are is by meditating in his word, looking at the scriptures about who God says we are. And the more that we do that, we start accepting his love. We accept who we are in the way that he has created us. So today, I just want to encourage you to continue to meditate in God's word, to continue to find out who you are in him and that he loves you just the way that you are. Amen. So I'd like for you to just say this confession confession after me. I am the righteousness of God. I am confident, beautiful, and kind. My mind and heart are strong. I am a woman of God. I am God's beauty. This is my boss off reminding you that you are God's beauty.